Hey everyone, in today's video, uh, we are going to see how do you block a nuisance caller like the person who is spamming uh, your organization with the calls he's going to make. So you may get uh, some sort of calls like marketing calls, uh, uh, some advertisement calls and whatnot, right? And maybe the person is trying to, you know, uh, disturb the people in the organization working. Right. So uh, in such scenarios, you may be asked by your, um, uh, your uh, company uh, or maybe your admin, um, you know, to block the calls or maybe the users are reporting that uh, we would like these calls to be blocked because these guys are calling uh, every now and then to for some some kind of a sales or whatnot. Right. So uh, in today's video, we are going to see how the call blocking happens and how do you configure that but before that i would like to let you know like uh, there are a couple of ways you can uh, block the call uh, in um, and uh, um, it depends right what kind of protocol you're running between your call manager and uh, your gateway so you can block the calls on call manager as well you can block the calls on gateway as well so whichever uh, choice you prefer to do right you can block the calls both the ways but uh, you have to understand like uh, in case of what scenarios you cannot block the calls on the gateways so for, for example like let's say if you are running um, mgcp protocol on between your call manager and the gateway and you would like to block the call then you cannot block the call on the gateway because as you know right gateway x is a sleeve and call manager x is a master and hence the reason you have to uh, block the call on the call manager rather than on the gateway. But if in case if you are using a H23 protocol or maybe SIP protocol, you can uh, block the calls on both the sides, either uh, on COCM or on the gateway itself. So in order, uh, let's say if you're running a MGCP, so the best way to uh, block the calls is a uh, route call by next calling party number and using that feature you can block the call and that feature is pretty much available in the call manager and maybe in the in the upcoming video i'm going to show you like how do you uh, you know block the calls so you can use the feature in order whether irrespective of what protocols you are using you can um, block the calls whether using h 3 mgcp or sip gate a sip uh, protocol between your gateway and the call manager so you use the feature and that feature is pretty much available in the call manager now in case of uh, sip or h 3 gateway now let's say you decide to block the call on the gateway rather than on the call manager right so you can pretty much do it you just log into the gateway and apply some configuration and block the call so in today's scenario right uh, let's say uh, we have a new caller who is trying to call from 9180106001 and he's trying to harass this person uh, who is working in our organization like let's say his extension number is 10002 this guy is calling every now and then uh, to 10002 and trying to sell some of the policies right so now this guy uh, 10002 has reported like okay uh, there is a person who is calling me every now and then from a number and i want the call to be blocked and he raised a ticket and let's say the ticket has come to your uh, dep department or your team now in order to block this number you decided like let's block this number uh, on the gateway because we are running either a sip or a s 3 gateway right now let's start with the configuration so what happens is like when the call comes in you it hits the pstn and from the pstn it is going to hit your router and on your router itself you are going to block the call so that the call will not be sent to the cucm and the phone so you are blocking the call here itself right so let's start with the configuration how what configuration are required in order to block the call so here is my uh, gateway what do you see uh, so in this gateway uh, all the calls are coming from the uh, ps chain so now what i have to do is at this moment in our scenario right the ps chain provider side i have made this another router uh, to simulate the scenario but in your case um, maybe the ps chain side would be your uh, you know uh, pots line or maybe your telephony uh, service provider with a e1 t1 lines right so it can be it varies on your situation it if you are running a sip uh, on your other side right maybe a uh, third party uh, uh, maybe a sip solution or sip carrier who is terminating the sip uh, links on your side so it can be um, uh, a sip provider so which means like uh, you have to apply some of the configuration on the pods line uh, if you are is running a ps chain provider if you are running a um, um, uh, SIP carriers, if you are getting a call from your SIP carrier, then it would be most likely a VoIP uh, 
dial pair where you have to apply the configuration so let's get started let's get let's understand right what it means to us so here is our uh, gateway so on our gateway what we are going to do is uh, we are going to add some configuration so to before that i wanted to show you right what configuration i do have present at this moment so if you look here right uh, my another side which i'm running as a um, you know service provider is currently you know accepting the calls from uh, on ip to ip leg so which means my another side is also sending me calls based on the ip leg right and i'm getting a call on my uh, router and then i'm sending the call uh, from my router to the call manager right and uh, if you say here i'm uh, running a sip at this moment but in, if you're running a e21 lines right uh, so one leg would be your uh, ports leg so where you are accepting the calls from uh, your service provider over the ports and the another leg would be your VoIP leg where you are sending the call to the call manager so in that case your uh, one leg would be dial peer voice one ports and you are accepting the call on a uh, ports uh, uh, you know port right so it depends what kind of scenario you are using again um, so uh, so to in order to you know uh, uh, similar to our scenario we are using a sip uh, leg or maybe a ip leg right so the first and the foremost is right uh, you have to do some configuration so what configuration are required so we have to create a translation a rule and translation profile so where uh, we are going to block the number so let's get started so i go to the configuration mode and then enter the command voice translation rule and make sure like this rule is not overlapping with another rule otherwise your another rule will get overwritten right so I'll, in our case uh, we don't have any rule so i'll use translation uh, voice translation rule as one okay so i'm going to put enter so here in rule one you have to call a rule one line by one line so my first rule is going to be rule one and uh, here if you put a question mark you are here either you are going to uh, add a matching pattern or a reject pattern so i'll say reject and then put a question mark so it is asking you to for a matching pattern so this is going to be my matching pattern so i want any calls to be blocked coming from um if you see here my other service provider and the pstm provider is number is 918010 60,001 so I'll go I'm going to put this number 918010 60,001 so what I'm saying is any call coming from 60,001 I want to block this call okay let's say if you have another another number as well which you want to block right I'll put rule to reject maybe 918010 60,002 is something another number I want to block so if you do a show run right now you will see there are two reject pattern we are uh, calling so basically in the voice translation rule one we are uh, rejecting this number in rule two we are rejecting this number so as in when when you grow up uh, your organization you want to increase the uh, blocking pattern you can keep on adding the rules as rule one rule two rule three rule four and for, um, further right so now uh, once you're created with your rule right and the next thing what you have to do is you have to basically um, you know create a translation profile and you have to call that in that translation profile you have to call this rule one okay so let's do that voice translation profile and then we'll name the translation profile with a name so I'll name it as call block maybe okay and enter so once you enter the profile name right you have to call the rule one here so that in this rule or whatever the blocking patterns are there right it is being called so i'll make this as translate now you'll get option calling or call but in our case it is going to be called uh, it is going to be calling because we are blocking the calling number so i'll mention as calling and then we are we have to call this rule rule one so i translate calling one so now if i have to show you the configuration again the configuration pretty much looks like this so basically in translation rule we have applied the blocking patterns what are the numbers that we want to block and another profile which where we have created as a call block in that profile we are calling uh, translation rule one right so now once you're done with this right you have to basically 
understand on which dial pair you are getting this call where to apply this uh, call block so for example if you look here right i have a couple of dial pairs with me so you have to apply this calling um, blocking call on one of the dial pairs so now let's say if you don't know right where the call is coming from which dial pair it is hitting in case of ports let's say if you have multiple e1 t1 lines right uh, so you may be getting calls from uh, any of the any of the available e1 t1 lines so you don't know what um, lines the call is coming from ideally you should be applying the blocking pattern on all the dial pairs but in our scenario let's understand uh, what is incoming call that is it is hitting where we have to apply this blocking pattern right so basically when the call comes in so you are saying okay uh, i want to block this call when the call is hitting this dial pair or this dial pair right so that you can block the call then and there itself so let's see let's understand this now i'll do a debug void cc epi in out ter terminal monitor so now let's say if i'm trying to make a call uh, from here to 10002 this is my 10002 uh, which is registered here and this is a uh, ps10 call that is coming to the 10002 and this is a nuisance caller who is disturbing the people i'll dial not from here but from here you see the call is coming and ringing on this person 10002 i'll hang up the call okay you get a lot of logs here so let the logs coming stop and then we'll see where we have to block the call now if you look here right the call is coming from the calling party number is this and call party number is this and the call is hitting incoming dial pair one so we know that when the call call comes in right we know that the call is hitting incoming dial pair so basically we have to apply this um, blocking pattern on incoming dial pair but as i said right you may have multiple uh, uh, you know e1 t1 lines or a multiple dial pairs where the call come can be coming from a different different provider then in that case you have to apply this blocking pattern in all the uh, you know um, dial pairs but in our case let's take an example that we have only one uh, dial pair where we have to block the call so i'll go to config mode now we know dial pair one is something where we have to block the call okay so i'll go to the dial pair voice one VoIP. <clears throat> now what i have to do here is i have to uh, call that blocking pattern that we have created right Bro blocking profile basically so i'll enter the command call if you type call it is asking you call or call block so we'll say call block and then once you enter this command call block then put a question mark it is asking you for the disconnection disconnection cost code or translation profile so basically we are going to call translation profile so in the translation profile it is going to ask you for incoming so we'll mention incoming and then if you put a question mark it's asking you for a profile name so if you remember we have created a profile name called call block if in case if you don't remember what you can do is you can enter the command do show run and see what call blocking profile you created so this is the call block profile you created right so this is something what we need to call here so again i'll enter call block translate profile incoming and enter this profile here so we are calling this profile now we, when you are calling this profile right you have to give give a disconnect uh, cost code to the caller so we can enter the command call block disconnect cost code if you put a question mark it's asking you for incoming again put a question mark now what kind of a disconnect uh, pattern or disconnect cost code you want to give to the caller either you can uh, give a invalid number or a user visit let's see let's see how does it look like right when you give it uh, invalid number or a call reject right how what is the difference you will feel in the call block so let's give as a invalid number for now uh, okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um uh you know remove the uh, um, i mean uh, remove the um, debug so i have turned off the debug for now now let's make a call and see if what happens if you're making a call see you see as soon as the call comes in it says unknown number right now if i change this to from invalid number 
to user VC, let's say, what happens using, okay? See, it says user busy. Though I'm not on call, but it, it'll continuously give me, it'll give me user busy, right? So th this is the difference, right? When you apply what kind of you know disconnection cost code you want to give to the user, it can be invalid number, it can be user busy, or it can be something else. So you can choose wisely from the list, and then um, you know put the call blocking accordingly. So to summarize this, what configuration we do need? So enter this command. So first and the foremost, you need a voice translation rule. In this rule, you are going to add a reject pattern. And in the reject pattern, you are going to enter the pattern what you want to reject. So if you have further more numbers, you can add further more rules. For example, rule three, reject 9180106003. You can add, keep on adding the rules, right? So once you apply, apply all the configuration, you have to just add the rule and nothing else. You don't have to call it again and again. So which means, um, once you're done with the entire configuration, as soon as uh, you get a call blocking number from your uh, organization that you want to block this call, you have to come, just add rule three, reject, and then the number. That's it. You That's all you need to do. Okay, so to reiterate, you call the, you create a rule first, and then rule one, reject, and then the number. Rule two, reject, and then the number. Make sure this number is accurate, what you get as an incoming call. Otherwise, if this number is not being matched, then what will happen is your call will not get blocked. So this is you, something you have to check on the debugs, right? So next is voice translation profile call block. So I'm calling, I'm creating a profile call block and calling the rule one here. So basically I'm calling this entire rule in the profile here. Now the next thing <clears throat> you have to, um, you have to apply basically this uh, call the rule profile here in the dial pair. So I went to the dial pair First and the foremost, you have to do a debug and see which dial pair it is eating. And then once you know the dial pair, uh, I'm calling this call block, translation profile, incoming and call block. So this call block is coming from the uh, translation profile we created. And then disconnect cost code. What is the disconnect cost code we want to give to the user, whether it is a user busy or invalid number, right? So as I said, like if it is uh, <clears throat> multiple E1, T1 lines, you have to apply this call blocking pattern in all the dial pairs. So that's better to do right um so this is how you can block the incoming call uh so maybe in the next session we'll see like how can you block the incoming call based on the calling party number on the call manager okay i hope you like this video thank you for watching